of your family. You are your mother. And whether you like it or not, you are also your father. I told my men they wouldn't be able to kill you if they tried. Glad I was right. How's it going guys? Welcome back to my channel and time for another episode of Luke's Reviews. On today's video, I'm going to be talking about, well, a brand new Marvel entry that is introducing a brand new character into the Marvel Cinematic Universe and one that is destined to become a household name, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Shang-Chi was trained at a young age to be a ruthless killer to serve alongside his father and lead his army known as the Ten Rings. However, many years have passed and Shang-Chi, now known as Sean, is living a life far removed from his father's wishes. When he's given no choice, he must reunite with his estranged sister to stop their father from unleashing a powerful and dangerous force upon the world. We're spoiled rotten with comic book adaptations these days, and whilst the quality of many of them is pretty high, there rarely ever feels like a truly special one. That feeling is a bit of a dime a dozen. So it brings me nothing but sheer unadulterated joy to say that Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings feels really damn special. Like I mentioned earlier, right now Shang-Chi just isn't at that same level of popularity as you have with a Thor or a Captain America. But the cast and crew are totally aware of this. When we're introduced to Shang-Chi, the character, and the world that he inhabits, the audience are all on a level playing field. It's like opening uh, a new toy box and getting to play with them for the first time. And director Destin Daniel Cretin totally engrosses himself in this film and quite frankly directs the crap out of it. Visually, it's stunning. He teams with ace cinematographer Bill Pope to make this movie so much more immense and epic. There's this fluidity to the camera during the fight scenes. We're constantly treated to these 360 viewpoints to fully immerse us into these crazy confrontations. The choreography itself is so impressive. Martial arts fans are going to love the homage to classic martial arts movies and actors. And it blends so seamlessly into the more comic book elements and set pieces as we go along. Some fights are even dance-like in nature, which honestly proves beautiful to watch. In terms of plot, the fundamentals of a basic origin story are there. It doesn't shy away from some typical beats, uh, especially when it revolves around a fractured family dynamic, you know, estranged relationships, tension between siblings. It kind of goes through the motions in that respect, but what makes it work so well is the commitment from the entire ensemble. Simu Liu is just effortlessly charming. As Shang Chi. With every single second of screen time that he gets, you can tell how much it means to him and how much he's putting in to ensure that the character of Shang Chi will mean a lot to those that see the film too. He's great when it comes to the action, hones down the trademark Marvel sense of humor brilliantly, and shares outstanding chemistry with uh, Aquafina, who plays the character of Katie, who, again, she's a really, really interesting character and works so well with Shang-Chi to basically be his anchor. Mega Zhang plays the sister of Shang-Chi, Xia Ling, who emerges into this film with a force that totally shakes up the movie in a good way and a really effective character arc that unfolds in a way that I thought was very investing. Speaking of investment, the character who impressed me the most in this film was the character of Wenwu, the film's villain, played by Tony Leung. Or, as you may find out in the film, the Mandarin. The real Mandarin this time. Some of you may not know this, but within the realm of Asian cinema, Tony Leung is considered one of the greats. And Leung's performance here, combined with the screenplay, wind up making his character one of the most deeply layered villains in the MCU. Wenwu is wracked with grief that it clouds almost every single one of his judgments, but his motivations are entirely emotionally driven. And I think that's what makes his character so interesting and compelling. Plus, when he goes into combat with those rings on, 
The dude is a badass. Now the film clocks in at around 2 hours 10 minutes and I do think it kind of drags towards the middle act. And the script does rely a little bit too much on flashbacks and exposition. But that didn't bother me so much because this is an entirely new world that the Marvel Cinematic Universe are exploring. Um, and so sometimes uh, some sit down time uh, and a little bit of explanation here or there to flesh this world out. It, it doesn't go amiss. And now that they've got so much new things to play with, it should prove to be really exciting from here on out. And thankfully, that comes around tenfold in one of the wildest third acts I think Marvel have ever done. Let me tell you that the trailers have kept quite a lot hidden, especially when it comes to this final act. And I was really, really happy that it fully embraced the fantasy elements that I know from the Shang-Chi comics. Because going in, I thought it was just going to keep it fairly grounded. But no, they go balls to the wall in this final act. It becomes a full-on martial arts fantasy movie. And that, oh, I loved it. Shang-Chi is freaking awesome. You can tell with every second that unfolds that this is one of those MCU movies that the entire cast and crew put every ounce of their heart and soul into making. And it pays off tremendously. The fractured family dynamics were earnest and well executed, the newcomers to this universe make their presence well and truly known, plus, through Destin Daniel Cretton's excellent direction, this felt like Marvel taking a big step to be more visually and thematically daring and original. Oh, and stay until the end of the credits, I mean, I don't feel like I have to tell you that, but there are two credit scenes, both of which are pretty awesome and tease some exciting new developments for the MCU, the middle one especially, I thought, is is one of the better ones that they've done. Overall, I'm going to give Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings a 9 out of 10. Anyway guys, those are my thoughts on Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Let me know, have you had a chance to see the film yet? What did you think? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. And my question to you, I would like to know what MCU film or TV show do you think has the best action? But as always, thank you ever so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Hello! Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, make sure to click that like button, and if you aren't already, click that subscribe button too.